Here our coverage of the chaos that broke out at the Capitol yesterday. The mayor of D.C. ordering a 6 p.m. curfew. Officers injured. Congress members evacuated and one woman dead. Queens Congressman Gregory Meeks inside when it all happened. He's joining us now live. Gregory Meeks, thank you for joining us this morning. Good to be with you this morning. Ask Congressman Torres the same question I'm going to ask you. Take us back to the moment where you were when you got word of the lockdown and what was unfolding outside your window. Well, I uh, was about to walk over uh, and then I heard uh, that uh, the Cannon Building was uh, uh, was being evacuated. Uh, so my window in my office faces the Capitol. I see I got a, I have a clear vision of the Capitol and I look outside and I saw from both the north and the south, the east and the west wing of the Capitol, uh, these crowds uh, that were initially when I looked out were some distance away, but all of a sudden you could see them merging in uh, and uh, going up the steps. So uh, I knew uh, one of my colleagues happened to call and said he was going for safety. Uh, he was going to go over to Capitol. I said, no, I can see out of my window. That is not a safe place to go. You should come to my office and uh, lock down here, as I had been told uh, at one point uh, to make sure I stayed in the office, lock the doors, lock down and be quiet. And so I had that member and a couple of others came over and they locked down with me and I continued to observe uh, what was taking place uh, outside across uh, across the street at the mm -hmm. Capitol for my office. Give me an indication. I mean, you've spent plenty of time in D.C. You've you've done your job there and watching this play out. What goes through your head? Were you fearful? Were you saddened? Were you angry? How did you feel? I was saddened and I knew that the ramifications uh, is going to be great. You know, I'm newly uh, elected the chair of the Foreign Affairs Committee. Yep. Uh, and I started receiving texts and emails uh, from uh, ambassadors and others from around the world who could not believe what they were seeing uh, on their TV screens. Uh, and I just thought of the damage that is being done uh, with us and our leadership around the world trying to talk about protecting democracy right. uh, as well as uh, around the world others who felt, well, if it could happen in the United States of America, and if the president of the United States can be the one that instigates it, that talks about fraudulent elections, that causes the kind of violence uh, that we've seen here, that that could uh, escalate other places around the world. Yeah, you this know, you sent out a tweet that you were marked safe, and in that tweet, if we could throw it up on the screen, you said that our ability to advocate for democracy around the world will significantly hurt after this day in America. You're talking about that right now, and here's the tweet that we threw up on our screen saying our ability to advocate for democracy will be hurt. Where do you see us moving forward, right? I did ask Congressman Torres the same question in unifying now and getting past this and repairing some relationships now that may have been damaged overseas as well since you are the chair of the Foreign Affairs Committee. Yeah, I think that that's why it was significant and important for us to make sure we finished our job last night to certify Joe Biden and Kamala Harris as the president and the vice president of the United States. Uh, and that we have a uh, at the inauguration on January 20th. I think that it was, you know, the, the message is that we did not succumb to the attempted coup uh, that took place here uh, on, on, on the Capitol grounds. Uh, and I think that uh, uh, with Joe Biden as uh, as president, uh, we can work collectively together to get that message mm -hmm. uh, across. Uh, but of course, people you, think if it happens here, it could happen any place. Right. Exactly. And, and I want to ask you very quickly, because we're almost out of time, about what you call an attempted coup. A lot of folks are very concerned about the police presence there. And many are, are, are wondering, was this an inside job? The fact that there wasn't the type of presence that many would have thought would have been just a normal occurrence on any given day, let alone stepped up presence during protests like this. Yeah, there's tremendous concern in that regards, and there needs to be a complete and full investigation uh, therein. You know, when you saw the presence of law enforcement, et cetera, uh, and the treatment of the uh, members of the Black Lives Matter movement, right. uh, it was completely different than what took place here. Uh, and that's, uh, you know, uh, and, and so that's very disturbing. You know, I can tell you, uh, in my mind, there's no question that if the, those, the complexion of the individuals uh, were different that, were, that, that caused this uh, uh, incursion into the Capitol, there would have been a, a different uh, result. Uh, also, it also shows, in my mind, why D.C. should be a state so that it could call in uh, the National Guard on its right. own. It could not. 
uh, that had you had to go through the the defense uh, department as right. well as through the executive office, uh, and uh, and so therefore they were unable to fulfill the, that responsibility. That's one reason why they should be a state. Yeah, we we kept referencing back to that June second where we saw the National Guard mm -hmm. on the steps of Capitol Hill, Lincoln Memorial for Black Lives Matter, tear gas being used so the president could take a photo op with the Bible. Uh, Congressman Meeks, I appreciate your voice and your time this morning. Thank you for joining us here in New York. Thank you for having me. Glad you're safe. Thanks for being with us.